Well, hey there, team, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome to my review of Against the Storm. So this game is finally going into 1.0. I'm releasing this up against an embargo, and, and the devs have been kind enough to give me access to the 1.0 beta branch so that I could review it. So yeah, I've been playing the full release. Again, I'm a reluctant reviewer, you know, memes, we joke about it, but the only real rule that I have is that it's all off the cuff, you know, no flowery essays for me. If a game costs $5, then I want uh, an hour of gameplay loop. Uh, it's not the highest bar, I think it's perfectly reasonable as a value attitude, and that way I can sort of judge all games fairly evenly, at least within what the developers are asking as a price point. So is this worth your time and worth your money? You have no idea how worth it it is. This is one of the best colony builders. It just so happens to be its own genre. It's it's an absolute trailblazer of like a run-based roguelike, dare I say, colony builder. It's the best at any attempt I've ever seen of that. But even if you take that gimmick out of the equation, it's one of the best colony builders that I've ever played, full stop. So yeah, look, I put in another eight hours because it's going for $40 Australian, $39.95. So eight hours gameplay. I've played many, many hours of this over the years as it's been updated along the way. If you're a long-standing fan, you knew this day was coming. There's not really much I can say to change your mind or anything like that. They've, it's, the game has changed a lot, and it seems that they've developed it hand in hand with community feedback and changed a lot of the mechanics. Like the way that the game plays now, it's almost countless, but there are things in it that I do recognize from, geez, when I played it at the very first release. But then there's other stuff that is just totally new and kind of mind blowing. They've added new species, they've added new everything, they've rebalanced the economy. But, and it's been through so many changes that it's it's hard to kind of put a finger on. But the final product is, is fantastic. And if you are actually someone who's very strict, you know, I want a bloody hundred hours for each dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the game for you because in, in my time coming back to this to review it, it's like coming home. I'm waffling, obviously. I'm obviously very smitten with this game. I still feel like I've barely even scratched the surface of the amount of depth that this game holds because it does have a lot of that outsourced meta progression. But yeah, like, like I said, uh, front loading, this game's brilliant. It's the best colony builder you're ever going to play and arguably it could be the only colony builder that you ever have to play. It, the amount of hours you will get out of it before you run out of gameplay and value and fun is, is kind of mind boggling. So let's wind it back. What is Against the Storm? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a colony building game, essentially, but it is built from the ground up with the idea of being run based. And to be honest, a run probably takes anywhere to 30 to 60 minutes, realistically. The game is engineered and built in such a way that if you try to go long, I don't know what how else to describe it, the game will punish you. You don't necessarily have to rush it, and you're not necessarily under an unreasonable amount of time pressure, because again, this isn't just some tacked on doom timer. The game has been built principally from, from absolute conception to work in that sort of run-based environment. So the pressure is there, it's a fundamental part of it, but you don't feel it. It feels natural. One of the most basic examples is that uh, there are like seasons in this game. There's like the drizzle and the, the thunderstorm era and one sort of more for pla planting crops and, and being, you know, happy and merry and, and the others more like miserable that you have to suffer through. In fact, this game, I believe, calls itself kind of rain punk, which is a cool way of putting it, I guess. You've got, you know, you collect rainwater and you can use that to power up machines and that sort of stuff, but it does. It has this has this rain theme, which is so, so weird saying that out loud, and yet it is so perfectly done. It's um, it's exactly the descriptor that I would choose. But anyway, during the sort of thunderstorms things, after each cycle, it just keeps ramping up with this negative debuff. You've essentially got to balance two meters, the blue good meter and the red meter. This is, this is for a run to be successful. And the blue, you do missions, you get reputation. You can get it through multiple different ways, and, and therein is the beauty of how to do your run and how to pick it. But then you've got the red meter filling up on the other side. The Queen's Wrath, I believe it is. She's getting impatient, she's getting the shits with you. They've got this whole weird furry universe, but it works fairly well for someone who absolutely despises furries and think they should all be bundled up into a cannon and fired into the sun. This is a bit of an exception. This works 
quite well, the whole animal, anthropomorphic animal theme thing. Yeah, there's sort of like this queen overlord and she runs out of patience with you and that's what will eventually kill your colony. So you're trying to balance the two bars. Every now and then when you cash in X progress on the bar, you will get a, a card, a deck, a building, I don't know what else to call it, but it is the roguelike mechanic of here's three random power-ups, pick one that suits you. And this will be expanded upon with the established roguelite cornerstones of meta progression and unlocking more cards for your deck. But in this case, they're buildings. And it's cool, it's got nowadays, like in the early days, it was not super readable because it was still an early build. But nowadays, at a glance, you can tell it will give you little tool tips, will tell you what the building does, how well it does it, how efficiently with like a star rating. So this building might be good at building planks, for example. So it'll be more efficient, require less resources, it'll be faster. Generally speaking, that's good. But it will tell you at a glance if you have that capacity within your colony and whether this is an upgrade or, or not. So you could actually just very quickly skim through, especially when you're learning it, because there's so much to learn. It feels weird calling it a steep learning curve because that implies that it's difficult. You will get there, but there is so much to learn. The game meets out the information at a very reasonable pace and you find yourself learning and becoming a bit of an expert as you put dozens of hours into this. But at no point does it ever feel truly overwhelming. But yeah, so at a glance you can sort of see, oh, well, maybe I want this so I can build raincoats for my dudes or this so I can make pies or whatever. And from that, you develop a build. And and that, that's the ultimate beauty of what makes this work is that it does in fact tie an arm behind your back, but it's reasonable. So with the spare arm, I know I'm talking in very, very broad concepts, with the limited tools that you have at your disposal, you will develop a build plan within that 30 minutes to 60 minutes run and you will and you will execute upon that and try and overcome the issues that it goes. So are you going to just try and cash out as many missions as possible? You can do that. You can try and sort of mission rush and build your economy strictly around that. Are you trying to get the resolve bonus from keeping your villagers happy? Because if you keep them satisfied over a certain threshold, they will start generating the, the win condition points as like an income, albeit quite slowly. But still, that's a, that's a legitimate vector as well. So maybe you ignore missions even, or you do them as required. But generally speaking, you start build. Every decision becomes about building up a stable, like food economy and making complex foods, or like we mentioned, raincoats as well. They put them on. The funny, all your workers between each job, they go back to the central hearth and then they try and satisfy their needs, and then they go back to work. So it's a really cool way of doing this production economy, but. It kind of, don't hold me to it, but it kind of removes the min-maxing spreadsheeting of trying to hyper-optimize everything, something like Factorio. It still works really well, but generally speaking, building into surplus is what you're doing. And because the moment to the moment changes and because the loop is so much shorter than, to use that example again, Factorio. Factorio, you play for like 100 hours on the same factory. So tweaking it to perfection, tweaking those little nips, as best as you can makes sense. But in this case, because you only have that limited run, you, you don't want to over optimize. The optimization comes from this building can build planks, cloth and, and freaking I don't know, raincoats, but you only want it to build planks. So you turn the others off and you prioritize that. And if there are other buildings that can build planks, but not as well, you turn that off as well. So the optimization comes from making these sensible decisions about what's happening right now in your colony. So that's one other vector that you can go in. Another one, you know, you can go into the forest. There's lots of different biomes. I'm only showing a little bit of the sort of beginning footage, but there's 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 so much going on. I, I hate reviewers that spoil games. I think there's, there's a real magic, an ethereal, fantastical nature to this, the soundtrack, the art design and all that. Obviously, I'm very enthusiastically telling you to go play this game and I'm explaining the general mechanics, but I don't want to show anything else. Exploring into the forest and chopping down trees, uh, that's a big part of it as well. And it's its actually brilliant. You know, I'm not a game designer on paper. I'm a gamer that has consumed enough that I've developed a bit of an understanding. But just the idea that you're in this tiny little alcove and as you expand out, you, you, you know, you can, it's a visual feedback loop as your dudes chop down the forest and expand out. And then they cut into these little glades 
and they will have resources and little events and some of them are dangerous glades. They will have like doom timers that activate or things that can kill your villagers if you don't deal with it. So there is adversity, but from a, a truly colony builder perspective, not from, uh, you know, guns and fighting, not, not really, right? Every single inch of this game is so cleanly considered, it is so perfect in so many ways. And then, like I said, you do a run, you finish the run, you go back to the sort of the Queen's Tower, whatever it's called, the Smoldering City. Uh, you buy upgrades for the currency that you earn from the run, and then you immediately get back out there. You do another run, right? This game is dangerous. I have so many things that I'm reviewing at the moment. I have work to do. I have a job to do. And all I want to do is boot this game up and do more runs. It kills me that I can't, not really. <laughs> so, so go forth and I will live vicariously through you. Get this game, play it, do many, many runs, build many colonies. They all interact with each other. They can trade with each other as well. You know, there's sort of a meta run to the run as well. So after you have like four or five attempts, the storm wipes all your villages away. So you're trying to make more meta progression within that mini meta loop if i keep saying meta i don't want to keep saying it i kind of hate meta progression but it works really well here but you will at a point end up with like a network of four cities that you can trade with towards the end of a run oh it's, it's so brilliant it's so clever but yeah truly the big takeaway is it's never stale and this is some this is a design principle i mentioned in something else steam world build another colony builder had a similar plus in my opinion that you could finish the game in what seven or eight hours or something like that in that game and then you could do another run now granted that's much more long form but it's the same principle i think games that have a cleaner more compact more well realized paced loop like we're talking about not just the moment to moment 10 second halo shooter uh, loop i'm talking about the experience of the game from start to finish and the the story that it tells and this game has got it down to uh, like an hour long run and you will remember each village for the unique run that it was and you'll just keep doing it over and over again and i i want that to be the future of gaming and narrative gaming and that as well um, and it's good to see more and more of these games kind of embracing it Again, I know I'm retreading a little bit from SteamWorld, but I, I'm not really interested in a game that is artificially bloated for a 50-hour narrative, right? We've, we know these games. We've, we've seen these games. It's unpleasant. More often than not, most of us would agree that instead of 50 hours bloat, cut it in half, make it 25 hours and clean up the gameplay loop. I think the better option is doing this, is just having a really clean loop that only actually goes for X hours or X minutes understanding what makes the magic work and make it so that the player just wants to keep doing it over and over again. And that's what this is. I, know I, I brushed on the 10 second gameplay loop of Halo that's kind of famous these days, but this is the equivalent. This is the equivalent of that 10 second loop, but if you were to do a colony builder where you actually build infrastructure as opposed to, you know, you're just shooting dudes in the head. Anyway, game is brilliant. Glad to see it in full release. Highly recommend it for anyone, even if you're not really into Colony Builders, if you were gonna take the jump into Colony Builders, oh my God, it, you can't really recommend much higher than this one. Anyway, team, might just leave it there for the time being and I will catch you guys on the next one.